Yeah. 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 And Father, you're so, I mean, this is crazy. This thing's just going and all. We trust you more than what's going on right here. Yeah. So we pray you that you help us get to this and not care what you're doing. I'm telling people, don't go by sight, go by faith. Yeah. This little church should be gone. But you keep working, you keep bringing things in, you keep doing. We even got a pastor, <clears throat> his wife, he shouldn't even be here, but he's coming because he loves you. And he's helping us. And Alan's down. A lot of times, mm -hmm. but look how you're using people. You don't use the best, and the ones that's in pretty good shape, you use the ones that should be here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's your strength. It is ours. So, so how far all these people, they've all got family members and heartaches and troubles, but you know what? You're watching, you're taking notice, and we pray for this country, too. Mm -hmm. Pray that it'll turn back. Jesus. Pray that it'll turn back. Yes. Oh, God, you're going crazy. Don't take them up boys and change them to girls, girls, boys. I'm crazy. And you take your notice. But you know one thing? We got you and we're going to get through it. That's right. We got you and we're going to get through it. Yes. But we do pray. Pray that some people are deceived because they don't know about them. And we pray that Christians are going to be witnesses. That's the trouble. People does not get no death all and tell them about you. They got the answers, but they're keeping it to themselves. And John said it out of night. Don't go by your age. You're not too old to be a witness. Get out there right. and do it. You know us and you hear us talking now and you want to use us now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, everybody got the age of that age. Age of that does Jesus care. This is one we have, don't say very often. Uh, Would you like to play the first verse through there? Miss Linda? Okay.
with the church and taught much, much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch and in those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar then the disciples every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwell in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. In chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because it sought, he, he sought to please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also, 
Then he went to dates of unleavened bread. So we see all this high point, high point, high point, all through chapter 11 with Antioch and the victories that were being seen there daily, just multiplied daily. Um, the teaching that went on. And, uh, and we get a real down there in, in chapter 12. We, uh, we'll talk about this more uh, next week, Lord willing, but uh, the King Herod, and this is um, there's at least three Herods in Acts. Okay, this is the middle one. We're not going to talk about Herod tonight. We're going to talk about uh, another thing. Next week we'll, we'll do more with Herod. Um, so let, let's get into the lesson. We see here such great change wrought assuredly by the Holy Spirit of God. What changes am I talking about here in chapter 11? What, what, what went on with these men and women? What, what's going on there? New churches. Yes, new churches. And these are by people fleeing persecution, right? That they weren't sent by any church. Right. And you know the church will basically send out missionaries and so on and so forth. And the only church really in existence originally would have been the one in Jerusalem. I mean, that's where where it started, right? Jerusalem had nothing to do with any of this. It was persecution. We know that everybody left except the apostles and the closer disciples, like Barnabas, Barnabas and he was there with the, the twelve and others, probably, that had received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Um, but we see that there's a, the great change I'm talking about is in these people's lives. They were going about, just like you were at one time, you were just living your life. You were maybe oblivious to anything else. I know I was. I just lived my life, tried to do right once in a while so that I keep that scale, you know, the good outweighing the bad because I thought that's what it was all about. And I thought I was doing pretty good. Uh, God would have disagreed. But there was a, a great change somewhere along in my life that there was in yours too. You, we talked about last week, you may not have been aware of it because you were young, but some people were, were say, very young, and others later in, into adulthood. Even if you're young, there was a change that happened to you that you had to learn about, and that's what you're learning about. Even today, we all are, that we're no longer who we would have been, which would have been a ser servant of Satan, and not even aware of it. We've just been living that life thinking thoughts and wanting to, saying whatever we wanted to, treating people whatever way, right? Still alive, wouldn't have mattered because we had just been living our life. But there was a huge change. In we, uh, these are saved. They were fleeing persecution in Jerusalem. They traveled northward, northward along that coast of, of the Mediterranean, about 300 miles, we said. They stopped a long way. Some of them never got up to Antioch. That was the northernmost point that the Bible discusses anyway. Some of them stopped along the way, but they, they witnessed all the way along that. Now think about that. They're afraid of losing their life for witnessing, so they flee the persecution and they witness anyway. That's a change in a life. Most people would flee any danger and they'd never do that thing again because I'm not dying for that. These people, they willingly did this. That's a change in a life. That's an absolute change in the way you think about things. Um, they took great care to share the plan of salvation along the way. Those who saved and living in Cyprus and Cyrene, we talked about, they gathered unsent also by the church in Jerusalem, yet daring to share the gospel with the Gentiles in Antioch. Funny, isn't it? See what's happening? We know this is the early church. I understand that. But we're talking about a change. Nobody put them on a payroll. That's right. Nobody gave them a new house, a car, a new chariot. None of these things. They right. simply, there was something new that was leading. And we know it's the Holy Spirit. We know that, right? Why are we studying it? It's because they're no different than you and I. You see that? That's the, what the Holy Spirit did, he still does. 
they followed, what about us? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see that? That, that the urgings of the Holy Spirit have never changed. He's God. That's right. He's unchangeable God. And the encouragement is to get all on the altar laid. Everything that you want. You know what that means, right? I don't care for it anymore. I care for this. That's what these guys are showing in their lives. There's a total disregard of what they'd have all or always would have regarded. They now disregard it in order to share the gospel that would have killed them in Jerusalem. Yes, they still do that. And they're, and they're, and they're talking to Gentiles. It's not Jewish any longer. We, we mentioned that before. So spectacular was this work that's 300 miles away that the church in Jerusalem sends one of its original to check it out, Barnabas, right? They sent one of the big dogs. Like he wasn't one of the 12, but you'd probably said he was one of 13 because he was always with them. We remember the, the apostles nicknamed him Barnabas as Peter was nicknamed Peter by the Lord. They nicknamed him something that suited who he was, which is the son of consolation or the son of exhortation. So he was sent to find out what's going on. He was delighted. He rejoiced and he exhorted them. And we said for last week and, and even the week before we talked about it, he said that with purpose of heart, cleave to him now. The one that you've just found, the one that saved you, now you live for him. You follow him everywhere. That means this, lay aside what you did and follow him, right? That's what that means. Um, that's what he told They're babes in Christ, brand newly saved, right? They don't know a thing in the world about what comes next. We know that he, he got Saul there from Tarsus. They taught there for a year, around a year, it says, and that so they were so their teaching was so empowered by the Holy Spirit that these babes in Christ mature to the extent that so the obvious a change is wrought in their words and living that they're called Christians. They were recognizable. And I'm, I'm saying I know that they were being mocked. I understand that. They took that nameless badge of, of honor. And we do that even today. We and we should. People say, who are you? I'm a Christian. We don't need to say I'm a Baptist. Who cares? We, we need to say I'm a Christian. That's who we are, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that their words, what came out of their mouth, it was different. Their, their actions, their living, where they went, who they spent time with, what was important to them, it changed as they were cleaving to the, the one who saved them, as they were cleaving to him, and they were called Christians. The teaching was remarkable, only that the Holy Spirit empowered it. Yeah. We know that Paul knew Bible, and we know that uh, Barnabas knew Bible. They knew that those things, but unless the Holy Spirit touches the teaching of his word, it does nothing. But it will accomplish what God sends it to accomplish. His word, it will accomplish what he wants it to accomplish. Um, and we've talked about all that before. We're, we're getting into what we want to get into, which is the, the, the new passage. Um, I've got a note here. Switch pages. See, okay. <laughs> you could never follow these notes. If you find them, just keep them up. I'm not afraid that you'll play in Christ. Um, I want you to think about these words. We ended with this last week. And uh, we're going to continue on with this. The same thought that we're talking about is you're all on the altar laid so that you can live that different life. You're intended to live differently. Your mouth should be different. You, what, what you can take in in your ears and your eyes, there's, there's some things you should look away from. Isn't there? Isn't there filth you shouldn't hear? Yeah. Isn't there nastiness that I don't want that anymore, right? Now, I'm not perfect because sometimes I still love it. Right? But it should be the intent of our heart to lead a life that does one thing. It should. I am a Christian. Yes. Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm saved by the blood of our Lord. That a person's life, we're still talking about this change, what will cause you to lay aside your life 
that doesn't mean you don't go to work. I know we're all so old, let's see, except one or, one or two. Okay. Okay. Almost everybody's done with their working life, right? We just mow yards and eat. Who looks forward to that sleep time at night? <laughs> My bed feels so good. Way better than it used to. That's the best bed. I mean, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I look forward to it. I go, yes. It's just about nine. You heard it right. Yeah. I get up about five, so I, that's my case. Okay. That a person's life would change so radically that he would live a life entirely by the urgings of an unseen hand. Do you understand what that means? What's the unseen hand? What's the urgings? What's the unseen hand? It's the Holy Spirit of God, yes? Mm -hmm. That a person's life would change so radically he would live a life entirely by the urgings of an unseen hand, willingly and with desire. That a want to, it gets in there. There's a leading, there's a leading, but the inside there, there's also, that's what I want too. You, you ever been touched so sweetly by the word of God, a hymn that's, that's nothing but Bible, it just touches you and you say, I want that, I, I want that again. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have been to the prayer advance. Um, Terry, you want to build, yes. There's something about that. I just, it, it's almost addictive. It was almost addictive. And, uh, you, 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 I bet. Yes. Jerry, I don't know. You didn't go. Um, but it was a sweetness to it. And I can't describe it any other way except I wanted more. And I wanted to go keep going back, but I would get sick every day. So mm-hmm. that's, that's my excuse. <laughs> live, live a life entirely by the urgings of an unseen hand, willingly and with desire. Not at all in any way due to the usual motives offered in the world system, which is what I was talking about. There's no pay. There's no promotion. There's no anything. There's It's within us. The Holy Spirit encouraging us within. Such an avoidance of, uh, let's see, none of the things that the world offered should move us. It did not move these people that were reading about in Scripture. They didn't say like, well, if I do that, I'll lose my position down at the temple. Right. Or they're going to kick me out of this housing area because they're Jews and I'm a Jew, but now I'm a Christian Jew. These things, that wasn't what moved them. What moved them was the Holy Spirit of God. Right. And they stayed with that. And they stayed with that. Um. These changes that, the, that these people that we're reading about here in Antioch and, and different places at the same time point absolutely to our God and Savior. There's no other explanation for why a man or a woman would give up all that they had because of words. They hear about a Savior, they believe, and everything changes. So nothing else makes sense except something has changed that mind and that heart. And I believe it only could be God, the Holy Spirit. This is true power and true wisdom. This phenomenal change is on display in the midst of a lawless, wicked world. That's where they were. What about today? That change taking yeah. place is the same. It's in a lawless, wicked world. It's still the kingdom of Satan here. You're right. Still, he is limited. We say that all the time, but it's still his kingdom. Um, The wisdom of God, in part, can be stated this way. He would say this. God could say this. Anyone will do anything I desire if they truly love me. Do you understand that's the only motive, right? Right. If if these people, if this man or this woman will fall in love with me, they will do everything that I desire. Do you see the change? And what's the motive then? It's just love. What's the thing that causes it? It's simply love. 
you get saved. That should be enough, but there's more, right? And you learn about the Savior, more things, and you learn more things and more things, and every one of those should make us love him more, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And if we love him, we'll do anything for him. I want you to think about what we're saying here. These are people that totally gave up the life that they had to serve an unseen Savior mm -hmm. under the threat of death. Mm -hmm. Only one thing can do that is they laid, they laid that aside out of love. What made them? It's the Holy Spirit of God. They weren't special. They simply gave into that Spirit of God. Listen, that's all we need. That's all that you and I need in our lives is we have him. If you're saved, you have the God, the Holy Spirit. Yes? Mm -hmm. He will encourage you every time you read scripture and pray. He will encourage you to love him more. Mm -hmm. And how you do that? Jesus said it. If you love me, you what? It's, it's talking about living the way I say to live. And God would say this. If you love me, you will. Mm -hmm. And put it another way, what Jesus would have been saying there in, in the book of John, chapter 14, 15, 16, right in there, he would be saying this, you see those people that are obedient? They're the ones that love me. <clears throat> that would be his explanation. They are the ones that love me. They are Christians. So we can put that in context of what we're reading here, and we can see... The, the change that's wrong. Why are they called Christians? It's because they love Christ. They yeah. talk Christ. They, they acted Christ. They lived Christ. That's what their whole life was. Instead of what was what was before. Instead of what was before. Let me find my right page again. Okay. Though the disciples probably did not understand it at the time, Jesus spoke of this great change to them while he still walked the earth. Oh, they probably didn't. Do you mean Jesus said some stuff to his disciples that they didn't always understand? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, right? But you know, they got understanding when they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, right? He said, I've got to go. It's necessary. I must go so that the Holy Spirit comes because there's going to be something new, brand new. It never happened to ever. There were old, I mean, Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament, but not like he is in the in the right. New Testament, the, the new comfort of the, uh, another comfort of the sin. So turn to Mark, we're coming back to Acts, but turn to Mark 10. The, the disciple probably did not understand at the time Jesus spoke of this great change to them, and this is in three of the four Gospels, but we're going to use Mark. Mark 10, verse, verses. 28 through 30. Mark 10, verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Peter's talking to the Lord, now Jesus. <clears throat> then Peter began to say unto Jesus, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now, in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. So, so we had this conversation. Remember, this was the rich young ruler that Jesus had was talking to and he asked Jesus what must I do to inherit eternal, eternal life and you know keep the commandments Jesus said and um, basically he, he had to get he had to he had to get rid of himself the rich young ruler he had to put himself on the altar he, he had to lay aside himself in the law he had done really good he had obeyed law, Moses laws but he could not put himself aside but, but we see Peter Lo, we have left all, because Jesus said it's hard for somebody that's wealthy to get saved. Mm -hmm. Very hard. And they said, well, who then could be saved? That was their answer, right? And, and then Peter speaks up for all of them. Lo, we have left all 
But I like the way it says there in that, in that verse, verse 28, it says, he began to say, because I think, I think Jesus cut him off, not in a rude way. He let him finish his sentence, but he didn't let him start a new sentence to continue on with his argument. He doesn't say, well, no, you haven't left all Peter. There's no correction. In Jesus' answer, he doesn't correct what Peter says. And, and he, Peter's talking for all 12, right? like he always did, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus doesn't say, well, no, no, you're wrong. There's no correction of what Peter said for all of them. Your giving of all will at some point be inconsequential when you realize what I give in return. Let me read that again and then tell me if you see it in the, in the sentence, in the verses. Your giving of all will at some point be inconsequential when you realize what I give in return. Do you see it? You can read that in verse 29 and 30. He talks about what he's going to give. Say, all right, yeah, you've laid all on the altar. You've left your lives. Do you see how we're talking about the same thing with Antioch? The same kind of thing. You've left everything. I understand that, but boy, you're going to get so much. The things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And that, I mean, maybe, maybe that hymnist actually was reading some of these things right here, these verses that Jesus is saying. When you see what, now, now look, would they have known all these things? No, Jesus is still with them, number one, so they don't have the Holy Spirit, but they haven't lived the life of being a Christian yet. They've given up everything. they followed the Lord. They will until he dies, right? But boy, they're going to be, be blessed beyond anything they gave up. I mean, I gave up the net and the fish. <laughs> I gave up collecting taxes over here, and, and I gave up this. And, I, and, and Jesus, look what he says. There is not that look, it's not just it's and it's not just to the disciples. Look, verse 29. Jesus answered and said, Barely, I say to you, there is no man. This is for you and I now. This means there is nobody that's left their way of life, their stuff, what they found remarkable and, and of value in this life. It won't receive so much. You, you won't need. You may not even remember what you left eventually. It'll be so far dim back in the back somewhere. You won't even remember that. It'll be of no consequence. What did we we read it last week? What did Paul say? I, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised the eighth day, a, a zealot for the the cause of the the Jews and um, Moses' law and. Um, um, learned at the feet of Gamaliel and on and on and on and on. And he said, I, lost, I suffered the loss of all of that. And I can't be about dumb. He, he had lived 20 more years past this when he said those words. A little bit longer than that. Almost 30 years. He, and he had learned more about the Lord. There was so much enrichment of his life. Why am I saying that? I'm saying, how can we explain somebody who could say, I will give it all up just for the Lord? Because in the Lord, there's blessings beyond description. Um, if you don't mind, I wasn't going to do this, but turn to uh, 1 Corinthians. I think it's 1 Corinthians. I'll tell you in a second if I'm right, if it's 1 or 2. It could be 2. 1 Corinthians 2, it is. 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. Okay, that's, that's written by Paul also in the year 59. Amen. Over 20 years later, 25 years later, you see, and, and, and he had learned those things. What I'm saying is the sweetness of what awaits us as a saved person if we'll lay aside the rest. Do you see? 
that has to go over here if we're going to go over there. Right? You're saying, what are you talking about? I'm not going to go witness in, in Antioch for anybody, and I'm not under persecution. I'm talking about leading a life that screams Christ. Yes? A, a, a life that is just evident. Good gracious, that person. They, they are just brainwashed in Christ. I'll be brainwashed there. I want to be. Yeah. I want nothing out of my mouth and in my, my thoughts and in my actions. I, I want to be kind. I want to be loving. I want to know more about the Lord because it's all good. Everything he has for us is, is beyond good. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. Um, I, I, want, I want you to think. I, one of the things we have to remember about God is you can't outgive him. You all are. You know right. that, don't you? Yes. But here's the thing. You can't outgive me there. In, in where were we? In Mark. Mm -hmm. You can't outgive me. You, you've given me everything you have, but listen what i got for you. Mm -hmm. And we see these um, these words. Let, let me explain what he's saying here a little bit, just a little bit, and then we've got to go on. There's no man, verse 29, this is in Mark 10, 29. There's no man that have left, left house Brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, or lands for my sake and gospel that he will receive an hundredfold. Now in this time, in this time, and then he lists all those things that you've lost. You'll receive a hundredfold. You're saying, and this, this, I, I can get a hundred more houses. I didn't, but, but I want you to think about what happened to these that your Christian. How many? Take a look around. I had a brother and a sister, have a brother and a sister, right? Now I have a whole bunch of brothers and sisters. Yes. I have one father, earthly father, who's passed on, but I've had, I've had fathers in the faith. I've had more than one father. I've had more than a mother. I remember Janice was one of my moms here, and I needed her, didn't know I needed her. But I did. Yes? Mm -hmm. She gave me much encouragement just by talking to me. Yes? Mm -hmm. I was new here, right? Yeah. Um, how many houses could these people have been invited into? And come back whenever you feel like it. You're welcome yeah. here. We'll, you come on and we'll feed you. Sit down. There's, no, we don't have enough, but you can have it. You can have what's left here. Right? Do you see what he's saying? Your family grows, it's, it becomes huge, and then he puts the cherry on top. <laughs> and he says, at the very end, and in the world to come, eternal life. Beat that with what you gave up, right? And uh, those are precious promises. If we can simply by faith do what Christ wants us to do with the encouraging of the Holy Spirit of God, there is so much blessings that would shower down upon us. Showers of blessing, that's a song too, isn't it? And they are there. This, these verses, that's one of the things that it shows we ought to understand that they were there then, they're, they're still there now. Um, What Christ says to his apostles is true for all. I want to repeat that. So the change, the change that we're talking about, that these people had gone through, that we're reading about, should be an encouragement for us, number one. But the change is set in stone. It will happen for all believers. Mm -hmm. You are a new creature the moment you are born again. Mm -hmm. You're born again, a new creature with new things and, and new powers within you and a new look. All of that, the change is there and the change is declared to be for our enrichment. If we will but obey his call. I'm going to say his call. We're going to get to that, I think. That call, the call seems to be for some at least the call is centered around love I've already mentioned that it has to do with the workings of the spirit of God in our hearts and minds which changes our lives 
And then the things of earth grow strangely dim as the hymn is wrote. I want you to think about what I just said. It's, it, it, it revolves around love. It centers around love and it has to do with working the spirit of God in our hearts and in our minds. If our hearts change our minds, it will show in our lives. Yes? yes? The heart is what guides us. We have a wicked heart. Before we were saved, it was all, altogether wicked. It knew no, no difference. But our, our heart, when, when we receive the Spirit of God in our hearts, that Spirit now is working in us and working out, and it, and it comes out. It comes out, the, the light comes forward. But right, aren't we the light of the world? Yeah. Right, Jesus said that. He said, I'm the light of the world. A little later on, he said, you're the light of the world. Because we carry him, we carry that truth with us. Um, and that power with us in the center ground. The love changes us. We, we find the love when we get saved, true or false. First time we knew love was in salvation. Yes. We knew lust. We did not know love. We might have liked somebody deep, but true love, which is agape love, right? Yes. Just love because that's what, what I do, God would say. I love you because that's who I am. I love you. I love you when you were a sinner, and I love you as my child. You messed up right there. I still love you. That's love. It's yes. unconditional love, yes. right? And that love, as we get to know that love, by getting to know Him, it changes us. We have all the potential at the moment of salvation. Is all we have to do is start laying aside. Start laying things aside. Put them aside. Put them all on the altar, right? Mm -hmm. So that we can serve the Lord now. Divest ourselves of the things that were just so important, just seemed so big and so big a deal in our lives. We just said, no, I don't want that anymore. I, I enjoyed it while I was here, but I want to, I want to be with the Lord. I, I want to please the Lord. And that love that's in us causes that I want to please Him. Why would you care about pleasing, pleasing the Lord? You already said, who cares? You're already going to heaven. So who cares? That love has to grow. Yes. Right? It has to happen. These, as I said earlier, th these folks didn't know all these things. They happened. Now, you ever heard of a man being saved and say, I'm going to preach, and within weeks he's preaching to a congregation? I've known people like that. Absolutely know people like that. Yeah. How could that be? I don't know. I didn't hear anything, but they heard something. And when they started to serve the master, I'm going to tell you, they grew way faster than we that aren't serving the master. Because as you serve him more, you know more about him, and you're going to love him more. Yeah. Yes, all of those blessings are, are coming down on you all the time then. All the time. Turn, if you would, to another chapter of Luke, uh, Luke 7. Luke 7, where we read this. We're going to talk about this love, the, the, the love that, that should be in our hearts, and it is in our hearts, but we don't exercise it, right? We have a choice, just like we had a choice to be saved. We can believe or not believe, right? I don't know how I can not believe when the Lord got a hold of me that night, but 736 and following. This is a story, you'll remember this as we read 736 of Luke. And one of the Pharisees, notes a Pharisee, desired Jesus that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus was sat at meat with the, in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of, uh, of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Verse 40, And Jesus answering said, Unto him, Simon, I have someone to say to thee. And he said, saith, Master, say on. 
there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence, the other 50. And when he had nothing to pay, frankly, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, Pharisee, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast judged, rightly judged. And now here's the key to everything we're reading here. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gave me no water for my feet, but she's washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And we're talking about love, and I think it's so key. I want you to just think about what we just read. You remember that story. Um, The work of the Holy Spirit is evident in the woman's actions, true or false? True. True. She knew the Lord, and she wanted to do anything. She did not have the power to do much, but what she could do, she did. She could cry, she could wipe her feet, and she could anoint him with the alabaster box. She could love him the whole time he's there eating and talking with the Pharisee. At that moment, she's probably doing it, still doing that same thing. Her heart's broken. She, she wants to be so close to him that she can't get away. She doesn't want to get away. She wants closeness to him. There's right. love there. But that's of the Holy Spirit of God. That's that's a Amen. God, that kind of love. Uh, and, and we know the Pharisee didn't have it. Her love is expressed personally and deeply. None of this is done by the Pharisee. And I want you to look. Jesus' explanation. Here's his explanation to the Pharisee of what's going on. How he treated me and how she treated me. Here's the explanation. It's how... The world treats the Lord and how we should be treating the Lord. Put ourselves in there because that's what it's about. Yes, it's for us. The truth of the matter to illustrate the great truth, the truth of this matter, here it is, is to illustrate the great truth concerning the view of ourself how we view ourselves when considering Christ's work on our behalf. What what was Christ's work on our behalf? Salvation. Salvation. Okay. We are saved. Yes? But here's the key. How do we look at ourselves in the light of what he did? In other words, did he forgive a lot in your life or just a little? All of it. Because he's saying this, if in your view, I did very little, I did something, and for that you're thankful, but you don't love me because it was just a little thing. As opposed to this person who just, this woman, and we can be that woman too, can't get over what I did for her and it's changed her entire life. Yes. Yes. She can't get enough of being near me and blessing me and doing things for me that I would be happy with. Do you see that? Because that's what that's about. Listen, it's about love. I love much because he forgave much. He still forgives me. Day by day, I mess up constantly, and I hate what I do. I'm telling you, that's of the Holy Spirit to you. Do you hate when you sin? I, it's, a, it's deplorable. He, he hung on a cross so that would stop. Yes. And I want to please him, and I want to live long enough to where that's all I want in every breath of my day and night. That's all that I want. I I won't get there probably, but when I'm with him, I will. Mm -hmm. And so will you. But what about now? 
I take it that this is what would have to happen. We would have to start examining. What did he keep me out of? What did he take me up? up from what, what was in that pit I was stuck in and that prison that I was in of sin right yes. what was that he took me and look at what, what he's done with me I love him and I tell people I sing hymns and I'm proud of it my, my radio station is on Christian music and I pray in the morning and afternoon and evening I pray over my meals and pub. I'm not talking about me I'm talking about us I'm not praying on how much good. Right. <laughs> but he wrought that work. And the more he is wrought, the more I love him. That's what we're looking at. And these people that have given, they put all on the altar. Yes. They're walking totally new, with threat of death. No call, no payment, no promotion, no nothing, no power, nothing is there. Let's not be guilty of saying this. I ain't so bad, so Christ's work ain't so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say, I'd never say that. But do you live it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's all that great, we ought to be on our knees thanking Him every day. Amen. And we ought to let it rehearse in our. I know we're not supposed to let sin get in our way. I understand that, but we ought to rehearse some of the things that He's done for us, that He's pulled us away from. Right? And the things that he's done in our lives that we didn't wish to have. I'm glad he did what he did, but I don't know him nothing. Letter B is the lady. I was near to eternal death, having no way out because of my sin, out of sheer love for me. In all my sin, he reached down and pulled me from the pit. I can never do enough. I love him so. Two different attitudes, all both based on the matter of what we think he is. If he's all that, we ought to love him all that more, that much more, right? He is. Yes. She and those we talked about in Acts, those were called Christians, were saved and changed, and they sought the change and they pursued the change. That's the the whole meaning of that cleave to your Lord in everything. It's Him in everything that we do. All of the all the thing we see is bad. We have to trust Him in the bad. Yes, but because He don't send bad without some reason, and it's always a good a good reason. Always going to be a good reason. Always. Could we go just to one more thing? It's just 701. I usually go to 709. So. <laughs> Could you go back to Acts 12? Uh, 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 yeah, 12 now. We're, we're officially in Acts 12. Uh, I didn't say much about them taking up an offering to send to Jerusalem, but that's part of that changed heart. These, these were not rich people. They had left everything. We saw that in, in verse 27 through uh, 30. It was going to be a great time. And it, 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 this was a historical fact. This actually happened starting in verse 27. The horrible, it was a drought. People were starving. They were already poor. Most people were poor. No corner grocery store. And these people up in Antioch, these are some Gentiles giving to the Jews who hated them. Yeah. Think about that. Changed hearts. Remember, we, we saw that earlier in Acts. They would sell everything and give the money away. They had all all things common. No one liked. Okay, so chapter 12. So we've talked about this life, living a life that's totally changed because the Holy Spirit, right? The power that's there and our love for the Lord. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to the certain of the church and he killed James' brother John with the sword. And then he arrested him. Peter, we see this giving of all in life. We see here that we just talked about the giving of all in life extends even to the giving of life itself to please the one who redeemed us. How in the world can anybody let somebody 
can, can anybody continue on and then, then get beheaded for it? Mm-hmm. He's beheaded for the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's what they preached. That's what they were talking, right? It would require a, a changed heart in mind, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. So we're living different. But then when the persecution falls, will it chase us away? When things get really bad, will it chase us away? You all have probably heard of this, right? Fox's Book of Martyrs. Oh, yes. I'm just going to read one thing in there, but this was started, let's see, um, 1563, the guy started writing this. He wrote about all the early church martyrs up to his time. And then somebody got hold of it and started adding newer martyrs in this book. It's revi- it's a revised copy. But how could you continue on knowing you were going to die? Right? Mm-hmm. You see, and I'm not saying go out and die. That is not the, the point. Is what a changed heart mm-hmm. and mind that must have been. So let let me uh, this happens right here. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, here you go. Listen, this is a quote. It's found on the Guzik commentary. And he quotes it from somebody else. There's a church historian named Eusebius. And he wrote about this guy. Okay, so I'm just going to read this out. Listen, Eusebius, the famous early church historian, described a believer named Sanctus from Lyon, France who was tortured for Jesus. As they tortured him cruelly, they hoped to get him to say something evil or blasphemous. They asked him his name, and he only replied, I am a Christian. What nation do you belong to? He answered, I'm a Christian. What city do you live in? I'm a Christian. His questioners began to get angry. Are you a slave or a free man? I am a Christian was his only reply. No matter what they asked him, his only answer was, I'm a Christian. This made his torturers all the more determined to break him, but they could not, and he died with the words, I am a Christian, on his lips. How is that possible? Pray that you have that. Amen. Do you understand? I'm not saying whatever happened to us. That is not the point. Is so much in love with what God has done. That's right. In your heart, mind, and in your life, that there is nothing there except yes. the Lord. I don't care what you do, there's nothing else but the Lord. Yes. There's one other thing I have to read, and then we'll stop. I'm sorry. We just have to put up with you. Know, <laughs> this is out of the book of Martyrs here. This guy's name is Polycarp. You may have seen that if you read it in Christian literature. Polycarp, mm-hmm. who was a student of the Apostle John. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John, that John, he's a student of the Apostle John and the overseer of the church in Smyrna heard that soldiers were looking for him and he tried to escape but was discovered by a child. After feeding the guards who, ca- listen to this, after feeding the guards who captured him, he asked for an hour of prayer, which they gave him. He prayed with such fervency that his guards said they were sorry that they were the ones who captured him. Nevertheless, he was taken before the governor and condemned to be burned in the marketplace. After his sentence was given, the governor said to him, Reproach Christ, and I will release you. Mm -hmm. Now listen, this is amazing. Polycarp answered, Sixty or eighty-six years I have served him, and he never once wronged me. How then shall I blaspheme my king who has saved me? In the marketplace, he was tied to the stake rather than nailed, as was the usual custom, because he assured them he would stand immovable in the flame and not fight them. As the dry sticks placed around him were lit, the flames rose up and circled his body without touching him. The execution was then ordered to pierce him with a sword. When he did, a great quantity of blood gushed out and put out the fire. (laughs) Although his Christian friends asked to be given his body as it was so they could bury him. The enemies of the gospel insisted that it be burned in the fire, which was done. The beginning of this has every one of the, uh, the apostles 
except John and the story of their their martyrdom. Mm -hmm. and, and we listen. There can't be any reason for the word of God except for our enrichment. And we we have to go to our Lord if we are to believe what we heard tonight. Mm -hmm. We have to go to our Lord and say. I want to love you like that. That's right. That's right. I don't know what you'll have to do to me, but that is what I want, Lord. Yes. And if you're serious, I'm going to tell you something. You'll know you are. Things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll all be a blessing. Yes. Lord, thank you for Scripture and what it can do on our lives. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches and encourages and protects and does so many other. He does so much for us and we praise you for that, Lord. Uh, we do have a desire to be ever more in your eyes. Lord God, we, uh, we praise you for all the work you've done for our salvation, but the growth you give, Lord, we, we want more. Yes. Give us a desire uh, as a thirsty, thirsty heart out in the wilderness for, for water, that kind of a desire that We'll look anywhere for it. We'll, we'll relish every drop. We can get it all in your name, and we'll praise you for what you do. In Christ's name, amen. 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 amen.